One of the things we do to simplify the world is to frame it physically. And so you look at this, you've got wall number one, and then you have wall number two. But then inside the walls, you have walls around everything. All these houses are walls, and inside the houses, there are walls as well. And so everything is... And what you do when you put walls around things is you make part of the world simpler, right? Constantly, if the reason you have a house is so that everybody and his dog isn't in your house. You just want those few people that you can barely tolerate in your house and not all those other strangers and God only knows what they're going to do. You'll still invite people in now and then because maybe you're sick and tired and bored of the people that are in your house and so you want a little bit of new information but you want those barriers to be there so that you can voluntarily modulate the information flow. You set up rules with everybody else that says I'm going to have some walls so you can't come in but what I'm going to do is pay you for that privilege by letting you have some walls where people can't come in. And so I think that's analogous. I was thinking about the issue of discrimination in relationship to sex because I've been thinking a lot about discrimination lately because everybody thinks discrimination is a bad idea, which is a very stupid proposition because you're discriminating all the time. And the most fundamental form of discrimination is choice of sexual partner. And so you might say, why should that even be allowed? Because it is the most fundamental form of discrimination. So, for example, almost everyone is racially prejudiced when it comes to sexual partners. So you think, do you use age as an exclusionary criteria? Probably. Do you use physical attractiveness? Only insofar as you're able, right? You use it completely if you could get away with it, roughly speaking. But you can't because the most attractive people aren't going to be anywhere near you. So you can't do it, but you'd like to. It's unbelievably discriminatory. And so you might say, why is that justifiable? And it seems to me that it's something like, you get to say no to me if I get to say no to you. It's something like that. We've agreed that everybody gets to discriminate on that basis, and because everybody can do it, then it's fair. It's something like that. It's very much worth thinking about. I don't know if you know this, but in Huxley's book, Brave New World, where the family had been completely demolished and children were conceived in bottles and given and produced in factories. So the whole idea of the relationship between sex and procreation had become a taboo. One of the mantras, the slogans of the society was, everyone belongs to everyone else. And so it was actually a social faux pas to refuse to sleep with someone, just as it was a social faux pas to have any exclusionary relationship. Because another thing that you might notice is that there's nothing more discriminatory than falling in love with someone. So it's the ultimate exclusionary act, right? And yet we presume that that's an acceptable, not only acceptable, we demand that as a right. That's worth thinking about a lot. Anyways, okay, so what you're doing is, by agreeing to this segregation and boxing, what you're doing is carving off little bits of the world that are simple enough so that someone like you can live for some amount of time there without too much danger. And everyone agrees to do that, roughly speaking, because everybody needs to engage in that process of simplification and safety provision. So we have towns, and the towns are nothing but boxes. What's interesting, too, is that we set up those rooms as little dramatic spaces, right? So you furnish them, and you furnish them with things that tell you how to behave in that room. So table and chairs tells you that's where you're going to eat and that's where people are going to sit and they're roughly going to they're going to sit facing each other that has certain implications because the chairs don't face the walls they face each other and you have a living room where it's comfortable and there's a fire and you're setting up little stages basically so that just like kids do when they pretend they all assign each other roles and then they lay out a little drama and that's what you do when you invite someone over let's sit in the living room you'll probably get a drink if you sit in the living room and hypothetically you're going to have some conversation and so it's a bounded place there are rules that apply and then you get to have a little exploration inside that set of bounded rules and if you're open you're going to discuss all sorts of things and if you're conservative and closed then you're going to discuss a very very small subset of things and so and so hopefully everyone will agree on that so that's one form of binding and then another is we put boxes around each other when it comes to groups, what happens is that people segregate themselves into little microgroups like Democrats and Republicans. And they basically do that on a temperamental grounds, right? Fundamentally. And then they produce these games that everyone knows how to play. And that's another form of simplification. So when you bring all these 
people together at a political convention. It's not like they all have the same ideas. They don't. And it could degenerate into chaos, and sometimes that happens. You get big demonstrations at these places, and sometimes people throw tear gas and all of that. But mostly speaking, it's pretty peaceful. And the reason for that is that there's a set of procedures in place that have some historical justification that are embedded within a shared cultural and belief system.